to, with girls that scuba. Now, it's an issue, as you can see by the T-shirt, it's really close to my heart. There are not enough women diving here in the UK, and generally. And we need to, we're going to be talking about why that is, and just sort of unpicking it. And it's not just a, a, a discussion all about women as well. So, uh, men in the audience, you can enjoy this as well. So, um, I'm going to introduce to the stage uh, Sarah Richard. Sarah, come on. Give her a big round of applause. Now, Sarah is the founder of Girls That Scuba and um, basically started it all up because um, she needed to raise the profile of women in diving. So I'm going to pass over the mic to Sarah and she's going to introduce the panel and um, there will be time for questions and answers and stuff, discussion afterwards. Thank you very much, Sarah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey guys, thank you so much for coming and watching. I'm loving these girls that's giving t-shirts. <laughs> thank you. Right, I am going to introduce you to our panel, three amazing women who you are all going to love listening to and you're going to have the opportunity to ask them some questions. So I would like to introduce you to Ramva, Ellie and Sarah. Come on. <laughs> But we've only been going three years because before Girls at Scuba came around there wasn't a massive presence of female divers. So we've come to kind of disturb the industry a little bit and shake it up and um, give some girl power along the way. So with that I'm going to introduce you and we're going to talk to these three amazing women who have been doing some great, great things in diving. So let's introduce yourselves girls. Remember you've got the uh, microphone. So, yeah, my name's Ramba. Um, I work at Fort Element. Um, well, I guess you, we have a stand over there as well, and we make wetsuits and dry suits and all things thermal for diving. Obviously, got a very big uh, environmental profile as well. So, we obviously care deeply about the environment and the ocean that we dive in. Um, and my position at Fort Element is in sales, so I'm the morning accounts manager. Um, but on top of that, I'm a dive instructor and a captain as well. Awesome, so how long have you been diving? Um, 12 years now. <laughs> okay, and what is your certification? Um, CCRK, I think is my yeah. certification. Awesome. Yeah, okay. yeah. But I'm in brand new CCR diver as well. Brand so new UK diver. But actually, Ramba is um, behind us now on the video with one of her friends, Maria. So that's them diving in the caves. Uh, <laughs> Double Ramba, <Very> guys. <laughs> um, in Mexico. So awesome. Right. Okay, Ellie? Uh, I'm Ellie. I currently work out in Egypt running technical liverboards with a company called Flow 2, who I know a lot of you obviously dive with, but I know some of you are my guests. So um, basically, what that entails is weekly safaris that we basically try to deploy around the Red Sea. Um, but it's not just in Egypt that we operate in, there's about 15 fleets of boats throughout the country. So, um, but at the moment, I am based in Egypt. Let's pass on Sarah. Like this. Um, hello, my name's Sarah. Um, I run a scuba free diving school in the heart of Milton Keynes, uh, which is probably the furthest you can get away from the ocean, so good choice there. Um, I'm also an aquatic performer, so I do um, a lot of mermaiding and underwater dance performances, and sort of travelling around the world and, and doing sort of uh, photography and videography with various species of animals. And how long have you been diving, free diving, and like that? Uh, about 12 years, I'd say, yeah. Awesome. And Ellie? I've only been diving for five years. Awesome. I am only 21. So. Yeah, she's, it was her birthday yesterday, so celebrating at least 21st with you guys. Awesome. Okay, so I'm actually going to skip back to Rambo as your video is on at the moment. Um, I just want you to tell us a little bit about cave diving, um, how you got into it, why you got into it, and how you found yourself in the cenotes or filming this awesome documentary. Um, like most things, it was kind of a, quite a coincidence. Um, one, one, of, one of my best friends, she was doing her cave diving course, and then you know, the third person for the course. <laughs> You were the spare part. Yeah, basically. And I was like, oh, why not? That sounds quite fun. Um, so, quite coincidence, and obviously fell deeply in love with it. And what, what most I love about cave diving is, is quite, and I think the 
video represents it quite well. It's just such a calm, serene experience is what I think. And then the visibility, obviously, most of the time, unless you do something really stupid, is, uh, is, is stunning. So and it feels like floating through space and like you feel like this inner space explorer. Like, uh, yeah, yeah I definitely. That. I think the, the film also shows that a lot. Um, I mean, how would you... I, I don't really see too many female cave divers. It's definitely coming more up and coming for sure. But, you know, explain to us a little bit about, you know, is there many other female cave divers? Are you seeing a lot more women get into it? Yeah, yeah, yeah actually, I, I think there is. And also, it, it, I feel like it's a very supportive environment too. Like, people are very encouraging and helpful. If you have any doubts, like... And that's, that's what I think is most important as well. If you feel a bit insecure, just like let them know, tell them what you're struggling with. And obviously with Korea and, and Karina, who are my like two best friends, and like going cave diving with them, it's just like buddy help. And then she looks you up and down and then like, oh, she knows immediately what I need help with as well. And it's, that's awesome to hear that it's a you know, really supportive community. Okay, I, I definitely want to get into cave diving for sure after watching your video. So, oh, so now we've got Sarah on the screen, so let's, um, let's get to Sarah. Um, Let's talk a little bit about you know what what you do. Like we see you mermaid in, we see you with some sharks. So tell us a bit more about your performances. Um, so I work for a company called Mermaid Cove. We have two tanks, a ten thousand liter tank and another one that's three times the size. Um, and we travel around and we do festivals. And it's not just sort of some mermaids swimming in a tank. We have full blown storylines that generally um, follow and change as you go around the country. So sometimes we have pirate shows. Sometimes we have Atlantis style shows. Um, it changes depending on where we are. Um, we also so we do a lot of photography and we do a lot of music videos as well. Um, so Mermaid Co. Sister Company is Tank Space, and this is where essentially we're hired for photographers to come along and. and as photography essentially or people that want a, a nice funky music video can come along and, and film us in the water right okay so how did you initially get into that um I, I was thinking about this the other day and i think so i remember about five years ago i was working at center parks and i was so bored i was working at a spa and i hated it i don't even like spas um, <laughs> i hate them and I wrote on a bit of paper like what I wanted to do as a job and it was so random, it had ridiculous things on it like things I liked and then it was like diving was one of them which is fair enough and then it had um, Disney was on there and um, making art was on there and lots of really random things um, and I sort of came to the realisation that there'd never be a job where I could be artistic and dive and be sort of a Disney princess and you know there's not a job like that and I need to think of a different ending exactly yeah, um, and then it turns out there is a job like that so yeah that's, good. Um, that's great that's a great story you basically manifested what you wanted which is brilliant <laughs> wasn't it? so over to ellie so i mean i you know when i first found out about you you were 19 and you were the youngest female technical instructor is that correct yeah, i was i don't know if i still am i've probably been overtaken <laughs> <laughs> well, it was even two years but yeah, that's, that's an incredible achievement at 19 years old. And, and how did you get into technical diving? I mean, it wasn't something I just preempted. I, at the time, was working at a technical instructor training centre, so I was like, always surrounded by it. Um, there was a technical and stuff right centre. I don't know if anyone knows the North Cornish coast, but you have a lot of shipwrecks out there that range between about 30 and 60 metres. So obviously it's like a perfect destination for tech diving. So. I just used to have everyone coming through the shop just like absolutely so excited about these wrecks and I was like, well, I want to get involved in that. So I just, I think I started with my XR Foundations course and just like it grew from there. It was just completely natural. Yeah, you make it was. inspired by the people around you. Yeah, literally. That's awesome. And now you're working out in Egypt as a technical instructor. I am, yes. That's incredible. And actually going on from that, I do want to talk a lot about jobs and, and you, all three of you work in the dive industry, in the ocean industry and I think that a lot of younger girls um, you know aspire because we all love scuba diving so much and, and maybe being a, an open water scuba instructor isn't the best paid job but we all want to stay in this industry and we want to find a career I think the three of you have got very different careers and you've all got very good stories about how you got your job so um, Rav I'd like to hear your story about how you got your job at Fourth Element. 
well, as I said earlier, it's all about coincidence. Um, obviously, I was a dive instructor as well. I was working in Copenhagen as a dive instructor, which is uh, yeah, cold. Um, I had to drive an hour just to get plus six meters of water so you can then do the open water courses. So again, as you said, um, I definitely wanted to work in diving, but I didn't know exactly how or what I wanted to do. Um, obviously, working in the industry, I already knew for the film and I absolutely adored the products. And then, and I was ready to move on. I saw that Fourth Elements was looking for a dry suit repair technician and customer service manager. And I had absolutely no idea how to repair a dry suit, but I thought, I'll learn on the job, I'm sure that. Did you, did you, and you knew, you dived in twice, so you at least knew what a dive suit it was, but you had never ever fixed one. No, no idea. Also, obviously, didn't get the job. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah. However, um, because of raising my hand as well, uh, I had a different skill set, and they were actually looking for a Nordic sales yeah, manager. Cool. So just because I raised my hand and I came in, got interviewed for that same position without actually knowing it, I thought I was for interviewing for the repair uh, position. But yeah, then I got them offered a different job, which is like, was perfect for me. So and that's really amazing. And then how long have you been working for Parliament now? I'm um, coming up to a bit over three years now. Three years. Yeah, it's because of the dry seat technician. <laughs> Or not. Yeah. Well, well, that's great. I think it really shows that um, just even showing your personality and, and even just getting to talk to these people um, is, is your step in. And I think also this is the show is so great for this because you get to meet so many people and you know you can even go up to them and be like, one day I want to work for you. You know, as we were saying with Sarah, you've manifested your job. And I, and I think that, that that you will stick in their mind. If somebody came up to me and said, one day I want to work for Girls in Scuba, I, I would remember her. So I think that what you've done is a great it's an inspiration for everyone. Just go and uh, go and tell someone after the show that you want to work for them. Yeah. Or just ask around. There's so many inspiring people and companies around in these shows. Just ask them like, what 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 do you do? How do you get here? As well, we all got different stories, and nobody. I don't think anyone had a straight line except maybe Ellie. <laughs> um, a straight line of how we got into this industry, and then exactly. And I think that's what. Uh, empathizes the industry as well like we're passionate people we're here because we want to work with diving awesome okay so we'll go on to Ellie's Ellie's later actually let's go on to Sarah and she can tell her her kind of story quite similar of how you got your job um, so um, I found this company called Mermaid Cove who have sort of the, the only sort of storyline fed mermaid tank show in the UK and decided that I was going to work for them whether they, they wanted me to or not so I applied and uh, they said no no we're not looking for any more mermaids um, and then a little later down the line they advertised for some models to come along and pay to be photographed just to sort of be in the tank um, so I paid to go along but then just did a performance for them instead and then got invited to an interview. <laughs> so I just sort of turned up and said, no, I, you, I'm not going to run away. I'm not going to leave. Give me a job. And now I'm like, oh, And then how long have you been working for them? Um, so coming back to about two years now, we're quite a new company, uh, but this year we've got a lot of residencies coming along in a brand new tank, so it's all on the up. Yeah. And then you also have another part in another business, or um, yeah, so I do. So my dance aqua stuff, I do uh, purely for fun. Um, so going around and just diving in wonderful free diving in lots of wonderful locations and doing a little bit of sort of artistic dance under the water as well. Um, purely because that's what interests me as a free diver. Okay. The owner of a blue sombrero SL63 SL Sierra 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 yeah, that's awesome. And then, so obviously, these two girls are, you know, they really went for the job and a different job and then ended up with a different one. But then Ellie actually has been very focused on what she wanted. So it's actually really interesting to know, um, you know, how you go about actually applying for a job. Or, but you didn't really actually apply, yeah, but I did give some. Yeah, the, there wasn't a vacancy when I applied. I kind of I knew that I wanted to work. I kind of had the idea that I wanted to work in Egypt because as like, your first time working abroad it is only one flight away so you're still quite close to home. Um, but also, I mean, the Red Sea obviously is one of the best diving destinations in the world 
Um, I had the idea also that I wanted to do liverboards, um, purely because it's just a totally different style of work to what I was doing at the time. So I knew a contact within Blue O2, who are obviously probably one of the biggest liverboard companies in the world. So I just said, here's my CV, this is a little bit about me. Um, do with it what you want, but I'm here if you ever need me, kind of thing. Uh, it wasn't until about three months later that I actually heard back, and I've kind of like been around the block of applying for jobs enough times to know that these things sort of come and go very quickly. But they actually got back to me and they were like, Oh, yeah, our current technical instructor has left. We need an immediate replacement. Can you get out here now? And I was like, Yes. <laughs> so you literally flew back to uh, it. It took about four or five weeks okay. to get my stuff together, and I was like, Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. And then, so when you are applying for jobs, um, if you were to ever apply for the same job um, again, is it that you find companies you want to work for? You, you know, you have relationships, you know, with these people. How do you actually decide who you do want to work for? I kind of just went for the most well-known companies, just sort of aiming high kind of thing. But it's yeah. Great. Um, also, I did, I did have the contacts as well, which does help. It does really help who you know. Yeah, and I think touching on that actually, girls, in, in general, how how do you think is the best way to get contacts um, in this industry so that if you do want to apply for a job, you know, you can actually go, like what Ellie did, hey, I'm looking for a job, here's my CV, give me a file kind of thing. Um, how would you say to get contacts about them? Or, I mean, as cringy as it's going to sound, you have kind of got to get yourself out there on social media and get your name out there and get photos out there and represent brands. And... Honestly speaking, from experience, it does work and it does take a lot of time to get through to people, but eventually people will start to take notice. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's very important as well is um, the dive industry in general has is still almost up and coming with social media. I mean, um, a lot of dive centres don't have social media, um, whereas at the moment we're living in the 21st century and that is how people find each other. So I think it is very important, you know, that you do have your own social media so when people are even, you know, if you said you went and applied to Blue and Tilly, um, and if they didn't know you, they'd be looking at you on Instagram. So, I mean, do you, do you girls all maintain your social medias for, you know, for the, that purpose? Um, yeah, I kind of try to, but, like, I think I, I met um, my... Uh, my bosses from the gym and Paul, I met them at the dive show, so that's where I made the first the point of contact. Um, and obviously, when you have like a personal relation as well, it's a bit easier applying for a job too, because you've, you've actually met them before, it doesn't seem as scary asking for a job. Um, and also, like if you've seen someone in person, it might be a bit easier to, for them to remember you than actually see, just seeing a piece of paper. Yeah, so actually, it's all the same. What you're saying is face-to-face you know, -face still wins, for sure. Like, if you can still, if you've got the opportunity to meet people, yeah, it's still definitely the way forward, for sure. Yeah, so. Okay, so um, would you say that you can sustain a career in diving for a long time, or do you feel like you need to also have side projects on the go? Or do you think you always need to be thinking about how you can continue? I mean, I think it's just nice to be honest. And, you know, do you think you can make, maintain a, a job in the dive industry for the next 50 years? Um, I actually had this conversation with a young lady, a young lady, a, 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 a lady um, on Facebook the other day. I put up a video of, of being in Skegness Aquarium. And um, a lady put, oh, I, I really wish that I could do this. Uh, and I said, well, why can't you do this? And she said, um, well, because I'm 50. And then she put up this sort of gif of a very old-looking mermaid. Um, and that really, that really affected me. So, so I sort of said to her that, you know, even as women, we do tend to sort of have a, um, a shorter expiry day, it seems, more so than men. Um, and I would like to, particularly in the mermaiding side, make people sure that you know mermaids don't turn to sea foam once they hit 30. They don't just disappear. You know, we are allowed to age. Um, it just means that when you're in the water, that things move in different directions, and that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and then, Ellie, what do you think um, coming into the industry at 19? I mean, do you think much about your future in diving, or do you just kind of enjoy what you're doing at the moment? I mean, I love what I'm doing at the moment, and to be honest, I kind of got swept up in the whole diving, like professional ratings, I kind of just got carried away into the industry. It was never really my intention. 
but I love what I'm doing at the moment. Whether I'll do it forever, I don't think I will. I'll probably go and retrain, <laughs> go back into diving with maybe like a degree. Yeah. Um, but just like, enjoy it while you're young. Yeah, and I think that's also really another great point is that if you want, you know, if you do want to come and work in it, you don't, you don't have to work forever, but just to enjoy it when you are here. And, uh, you know, I think all three of you and everyone, hopefully, that we represent in Girls and Scuba, it is just about that positivity and having fun. It doesn't need to be, you know, too serious. That you, you don't. I'm glad you didn't say to me, "I want to be in diving for the rest of my life," because you need to have dreams and aspirations that you want to go and achieve, and you don't need to say it just to make the diving visible. So that's great. I think that's awesome. Um, do you want to say about? Do you think, how do you feel like you're, you, you've got a slightly different um, job that you can develop a little bit more because you're with, you know, very um, open brands who you can work with and continue to work on? Yeah, and also obviously I don't dive every day, um, so that's a bit different. I talk about diving every day, which is kind of what I did already to begin with, and I uh, love talking about diving, so anyone can listen. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Um, but no, and, and as you said, I'm always looking for the next adventure, and then even, I think most of us do the same as well, like even our holidays, we go diving. Yeah, exactly. We did it, that's why we're here. <laughs> so, um, I think I'd be interested to know... Um, how you go, what you guys would like to see slightly different in the industry, um, not negative, but what you would like to see in the future, like what kind of events, what kind of collaborations, or any changes you feel like would be great for the industry? So, Sarah? Um, I think in diving, there seems to be, particularly when you get to sort of the, the pro levels, there seems to be this sort of um, expectation that you should know everything and you should know the answer to everything. And if you don't know the answer to everything, then you're not a brilliant in instructor, you're not a brilliant pro diver or something like that. And I would like to see a little bit of a, a change in the community where people are allowed to ask questions. I think it's very upsetting to see, particularly on a lot of dive forums, there's a mentality where if somebody's not quite sure and they put a question up, they kind of get penalised a little bit for asking the question when they're doing the right thing in actually asking the question. Um, so I would like to see that there's maybe a bit more of a change in the future where people realise that we are human, we forget things, we relearn things, and that's sort of what happens. Yeah, I think that's amazing. Yeah, I mean, touching again on that, nice I guess to see a little bit less competition sort of go at your own pace don't feel the need to compare yourself to someone else with their qualifications because you're just inevitably going to get yourself into trouble um, but yeah just support each other rather than like you said rather than tearing people down just help educate and learn and be open to learning as well that's great yeah, I really like that you're saying as well, and especially I think people need to remember that the pictures we put up on social media are our best pictures. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. <laughs> we should actually start a social media of like bad pictures. <laughs> but that's like I, but I do like that's why I really value the girls at scuba forums as well because I feel that's a very supportive community as well. I feel that's a fresh that place place for people to ask questions so it feels very supportive there i just wish that it was more for the entire industry that yeah we do that. actually need something that covers across the whole community um you know the only reason we we started it just for girls was because there was a need there and there was a demand there and um, you know hopefully going forward we can kind of spread what our positivity and like there's no judgment across the whole industry so yeah Awesome. I am gonna unless you guys want to say anything else, I'm gonna pass it over to the audience um, to ask any questions. Oh <laughs> yeah, I'm actually gonna get Miranda to um, so has anyone got a question for any three girls? Stick your hand up if you've got a question and I will come over. Oh don't do that. Yes, okay, there we go. Okay. Question number one. How do you start with free diving? Where do you start with the breathing or where do you go? Um, so I definitely suggest the course. Um, this isn't something that I think you can pick up by sort of reading it yourself or looking on YouTube, which seems to be sort of the thing is, you know, if I want to learn how to make a giant dragon puppet, then I'll just do it on YouTube. That's quite specific. That's because I am making a giant dragon puppet. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think that there's 
there really is something to be said about having an instructor who can talk you through your individual body because especially with free diving not all one uh, one thing fits all everybody's body is different so you definitely need a person there that can cater it to you um, so regardless of whatever governing body you go with they all know what they're doing and I, I highly advise going for that first basic free dive course to see if this is something that you enjoy and that if you're going to catch the bug from it and you're going to progress from there I went on an amazing free diving course. I did a weekend of free diving, and it was just it was absolutely amazing. And you, once you've got the bug, it really is a very special thing. It's one of those things. That, can I really hold my breath for that long? Yes, you can. If you do all the techniques and all the training, it's a wonderful thing to to just have a go. Um, I don't know if we've got any free diving. We must have some stands doing free diving. I haven't actually had a chance to walk around yet. Cause I've been so busy, but um, anyway, I think it's a really really fun thing to learn to do. And, It should be very tongue-in-cheek and it should have the skills needed truly to be a woman in diving. So you should do like an obstacle course but with your hair wrapped in a towel and you have to do the obstacle course without the towel coming off and things like that. And that's how it should work instead of dresses. <laughs> right, any other questions? Oh yes, girl at the front. Dive. 
I don't think you can beat Malta as a dive site, um, as a dive site, as a country, um, purely because the, the, the amount of things, the amount of dive sites that are so close to each other that you're wildlife diving are too often go together. So if you're looking at all the links in front, you're not just diving the wreck, you're diving all the habitat that is the wreck that the wildlife's living in as well. So you know, there's a bit, bit, bit over that, isn't there? Okay, one more at the front. Did you stop to show an interest in diving? I mean, I was 15 and I didn't show an interest. I was made to go on a diving course by my mother. I didn't want to do it, but I did it and I fell in love with it and I sort of got bitten by the bug. But yeah, I was 15, so that was six years ago. I think it was when I started to know when I saw Finding Nemo. Have you seen Finding Nemo? <laughs> yeah, that's when I started. It was so pretty as well with all the fish and living on the coral reefs and everything. That's when I started. I think I was 15 as well, I think so. I think I always thought I was going to be a diver even before I was a diver. As a child, I was just flicking through Discovery Channels, watching documentaries on sharks, and I was sort of a little bit obsessed um, when I was younger. And I wanted to be a marine biologist, and you know, found out I wasn't clever enough for that, but became a mermaid. Um, yes, yeah, so I think I always knew that I was going to get into diving, and then, then once I saved up my pennies and did, it was the best thing that I've ever done. Okay, you've got one here. Hi, I'm, I've got your Facebook page and uh, I do a lot of uh, helping out with any queries because I've been diving for 20 years and um, hope, you know, hopefully I've got it right by now so I'll give out some help when people have questions. Um, I do agree with you on getting together with a local dive club even if you don't think you ever want to go into the cold water in England. In English diving, Scotland, England, Wales, amazing. Absolutely amazing. We've done um, Isles of Scilly, uh, well, all the way around, uh, my husband and myself. You also mentioned something quite close to my heart, which is Malta. Uh, my husband and I spend most of the year in Malta, um, well, in Gozo, above Malta, which is a lovely, lovely island and perfect for new um, newbies, people like ocean divers, people who are just starting. Because there's lots of shallow areas with a lot of very pretty reefs actually, but not the same, the same abundance as you say, like as in Egypt, the colours aren't there as much. But we do get some superb photography, we both are photographers, and um, there's caves, there's well, all sorts. Have you um, managed to dive the azure window now it's no longer the azure window? We've done it when it was, and we saw it was falling down sadly, when we were underneath... Um, a couple of years ago, before it, just before it came down really, we'd see a huge chunk just underneath it that was as big as a 4x4. Four four. Um, it was a different colour to the rest of the sort of white colour. But I must say, when it came down, it became so ethereal down there, it was like diving, I don't know, in heaven. <laughs> it was so beautiful because everything was very white and very pretty. Thankfully now, I say thankfully for ecological reasons, the reef has now covered over, it's now all become a big reef and there's a lot of life coming back down there and there's lot of caves down there to look in and all sorts as well, not just from the falling debris but all around, it's very very nice. I think it's a fantastic place to dive and we do it all the time, so we're not bored with it yet, we've been there four years. <laughs> anyway, nice to speak to you girls, Be and I often work to a forum for you, <laughs> answer questions. One more over here. I'll just put in a plug for goes. I mustn't do that. Sorry, somebody over here had their hand was you. Um, firstly, just to echo the sentiments about the UK diving, definitely agree with that. But yeah, I'm always the only girl, but if this is about 12 years ago, I'm about the only girl, so I'd love to see that. Um, the question was, um, it was the same thing I asked Steve back from actually, where haven't you done before that you want to dive at the most? There's too many to mention I think as well, but I think on top of the list would probably be the Galapagos. I'd love to go there. Um, and yeah, there are, there are also many holes I haven't been in Budapest. It's got some really cool caves as well, and I don't the town. I'd love to go in and go to the most city next day. I actually just thought I would love to dive Scapa Flow in Scotland. I've never dived that before. That's on my list. 
think the Galapagos has to be up there. I, yeah, a lot of pennies to save for that one, but that's that will be the plan and the goal. Yeah. Okay, well, one over here. What would you personally think the dive industry could do to encourage more women to become scuba divers? Changing rooms and cold halls, I think. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Is that the British dive industry? Yeah. change in a car park and you, you, you are the only woman on you yeah get the hands go up yeah <laughs> it's just embarrassing isn't it you have to get one of those towel like things that you've got to be robes towel thing that just has the thing you can do it yeah so I think, I think it's got a lot better in terms of equipment that is now designed for like a female body so that's starting to incorporate more women into being interested because it's purely because it's just becoming more comfortable so I think that's quite important yeah, obviously that's another thing why I applied for my job at Fourth Lawman because I like, don't believe in unisex. Unisex doesn't really exist. We are different body shapes, we are different people, and then we have different requirements. Um, but again, like what you're doing, Sarah, with Girls at Scuba really helps in like having uh, having like girls girls night out, going diving or something like that. We like have a club night. You can do like. Do loads of clothes swap, you can do equipment swap or something like that. Equipment swap nights. Like, don't necessarily always have to go diving because, as we know, like, we've had storms lately as well, so it's been quite hard to go out. Um, but just having having nights where you sit and have chats about diving is quite fun too, and then just, yeah, having an environment, I think. I think not not just the women, but in, in people in general, if we went back to the, the previous sort of conversation about people are allowed to learn and people are allowed to be beginners. I do think that perhaps if a mentality was sort of uh, brought forward with, with some clubs where it is okay to be a beginner and not know everything and the reason that you're learning to dive is because you don't know how to dive and perhaps uh, not have so much, there's a bit, sometimes it's a bit of intimidating there so it's a bit like I know what I'm doing so you know I'm going to look down at you you we learners but I think maybe if there was a bit more of a mentality change where it's okay we're all divers but some people are in different areas at different times and they all we all sort of know different bits um, and that it's okay to learn I think that would probably encourage people and, and not put people off as much when they first begin. I've got a question in the back here. Hi there I've just going back to the dive industry as somebody who works in the dive industry as a male um, do you feel that there is uh, unique things that make it harder for females to get into or like, above and beyond what you see in the rest of the world? I mean, with me personally, um, being obviously 21 years old and a tech instructor, when I get customers on the boat and they sort of go, oh, where's the tech instructor? And you're like, oh, me. And they're like, oh, yeah, no, really. And I'm like, yeah, really. <laughs> And so, but you know what, if you give them time and you prove your skill and they'll, they, people do accept you and it's, well, it's, it's hard for everyone to do because especially with diving you want to go with someone you trust and that looks like they know what they're doing. So I just give people time and to prove yourself basically. I, I think often it's your own insecurities. It's just be, to be brave, try, to try it out. It's, it's, it, like if you want to do it, just give it a go. We were all beginners once. Everybody was, and like and even now, I'm still a new rebuilder diver. I feel, I feel I still have a lot to learn. It's quite challenging, but it's just go out there, ask for help. Don't be scared to ask because we've all been there. I think I've been quite lucky with um, not necessarily not noticing much of a difference how sort of people react to me in regards to my gender, um, but I have been quite lucky in the sense that whenever I ran courses and things like that because it's been sort of my business it's either sort of my way or the highway so you sort of either listen to me or you go home <laughs> right, We've got a question from the youngest member of the audience here
Pelosi, he's, he's very cheeky. He likes to come up and like look at you as well. He comes up to say hello when you see him on the water. I like seals because they're really cheeky and they like to play with you. Sharks. That's all I've got to say. Brilliant. Well, thank you guys so much, girls, so much for uh, that really interesting discussion. It's really inspirational to hear lots and lots of women talking about diving so passionately. Um, can I give a big plug uh, to the girls as well? Because uh, they've got a stand over in the sort of far corner of it by the, uh, by the what number? Number 19, um, up the top end of the, the hall. So if you want to go and find out a 